We're going to talk about an important topic in computer science, uh, searching and sorting. Uh, this topic basically is useful throughout computer science, independent of what language you're working on. And because your AP exam is supposed to be a computer science exam and not a Java exam, one might think that this would be a heavily covered topic on the AP test, but strangely it's not. In fact, these two topics, sorting and searching, I've never seen them appear on the FRQ of any year's exam. And in terms of the multiple choice, you'll typically only get maybe two or three questions out of the 40 on this topic. It's always been a mystery to me as to why the College Board doesn't discuss these topics more. Maybe they just feel that because it's an introductory course, uh, it's not appropriate. Anyway, if you take another programming course after this one, whether it's data structures with me or a take up another programming course in college, you'll find that these will be very large topics in any kind of general programming course. They're important. We're gonna start off with the easier one, which is searching, and that will take about 10 minutes to cover only, and sorting could in theory take weeks, but we're only gonna learn three simple sorts. We wanna talk a little bit about how to search an array to find a number. So let's say I have this array right here. And let's say further that I have some data in the array and I happen to be looking for the number six in the array. Six you notice is not in the array, but I don't know that yet. And so now one of the things I'm gonna ask you first of all is, is the array sorted? Is it sorted, Ms. Kalen? Mm -hmm. It's not sorted. So now I need to look for the six what would be a good algorithm to look for a number inside of an array? We could use a for loop, and then what would we do in the for loop, sir? So we could create a pointer here in the for loop, an index of the loop, and then we could advance that pointer along to see if we find the six. If there are n elements in the array, worst case situation, how many comparisons will we have to do before we either find it or conclude that it does not exist in the array, yes sir. And so you can see that if we do this searching one at a time, this is called a linear search. The worst case scenario is that it would take us on the order of n elements or n comparisons. If n is the number of elements, it would take us on the order of n comparisons to find the item or to conclude it isn't there. If it isn't there, it will always take n comparisons. If it is there, if we get unlucky and it's the last element, then that will also take n comparisons. If it is there, what will be the average number of comparisons that we will need if we were to run the trial over and over again and take the average of how many comparisons we did? n over 2. Make sense? We're going to more, be more concerned with the worst case scenario. So here we're going to say that the linear search is going to be on the order of n comparisons. We're going to look at another scenario now. And once again, we're looking for the number six. And this time you'll notice that the array has been sorted ahead of time. And we want to know how long will it take this time for us to find out if the six is there or not. Could we use the same linear search algorithm that we had before? Mm -hmm. Could we do it? Now discuss with your partner if there's a faster way. Ms. Banerjee, do you think there's a faster way to search the array if we know ahead of time that it's sorted? Okay, what would you do, Miss? So she's suggesting we find the middle element. That will be easy to calculate because we just asked the array, how many elements do you have? And we divide by two. Now here I've made it easy because there's an odd number of elements, but if there's an even number, you can just still get close to the middle. And we find that our, the number that we're looking for is larger than the middle element. What should we do next? So now we can ignore all these numbers and we can simply focus here. And once again, we can put our pointer somewhere in the middle and check either one. And we can rapidly conclude now that the six is not there so now let's take a look at this from a slightly larger array perspective. So I'm going to create a little table here and I'm going to say n is the size of the array and q sub n, oops, q 
sub n is the number of questions or queries that I need to do on the array to figure out if I have the number or not. I think you will agree that if n is 2, then I only need one question. If n is 4, I need two questions. If n is 8, how many questions, higher or lower questions, will I need? Three. And so now, I would like you to get together with your partner and tell me, what is this function q of n? Like if I say n, how can you calculate q of n? What mathematical function is this? Take a look at it here. Here's the n row, and here is the q of n row. These are the inputs, these are the outputs, these are the independent variables, these are the dependent variables. And I wanna know what the function is. Okay, so q of n, q of n is equal to log base two of n. So we would say that for this function, sorry, for this sorted array technique, which is also called a bisection search, and sometimes it's also called a binary search, these two things mean the same thing. You can probably guess why it's called that. Bisection means we cut it into two pieces each time, successively smaller pieces, right? We would say that our algorithm takes on the order of O of log base two of N comparisons. That's a lot faster than the O of N that we had before for the uh, sequential search. You agree? Yes. Question. Let's say I have an unsorted array. So I have an unsorted array. I have this array here. Uh, let's say it's pretty large and it's completely unsorted. Should I, if I'm looking for a number, should I do a linear search or should I sort the array first and then do a bisection search? What are the advantages and disadvantages of each approach? We just said that the bisection search is a lot faster. Does that mean I should just sort the array first and use the bisection method? Ms. Siegel, we're trying to compare two scenarios. One scenario is we leave the array unsorted and we just go through the pain of a linear search. Alternatively, we can sort the array and then do a bisection search. I think we agree if the array is already sorted, then choice B is the clear winner. But now the question is, do we wanna pay the price of sorting the array? So it turns out that it's a trick question because it depends how many times you're going to look in the array. If you're only going to search the array once, then it's too painful to sort the array. It takes too long. Instead, what you want to do is just leave it unsorted and just go through the pain of a linear search. But if you're going to search that array more than once, whether it's twice, three times, a thousand times, then you're better off sorting the array once and then continuing with the bisection search each time you want to do the search. Okay, so that, believe it or not, is my entire lesson on sorting, uh, sorry, on searching. You need to be able to, when they show you code on the multiple choice portion of the AP exam, look at the code and say, oh, that's a linear search or oh, that's a bisection search. As I leave this section and where we're getting ready to move on to sorting, I would like you to discuss with your partner, what would a bisection search look like in the code?